Father, we come to you again on this Lord's day as we continue to worship you and give you the praise. Father, we just pray that you continue to be with us. We thank you for our, in our first study there that as we continued our study on dinosaurs and scripture, that we could see that you're describing to Job, who is a man that lived, as we saw, roughly uh, 1622 B.C. or whatever, 30, whatever, 3,600 years ago, that, you know, he was there after the flood. Dinosaurs were still there after the flood. And that this animal was one of your great creations. It was clearly visible to him. And we, we thank you, Lord, that you uh, put these things in your word to discredit those evolutionary scientists and all these other people that push all this falsehood that always they're just trying to discredit your word, Lord. And Father, we just pray as we continue our study in Revelation that you'll give your servant the words to speak and to understand. And we just pray, Lord, that you uh, just guide us and just keep us on that right path, Lord, and just just be with us. You know, we, we have uh, various prayer requests that have been put out that we pray, Lord, that you'll answer those prayers and, and answer them quickly, Lord. We know that you, even when you answer prayers, and you do it on your own time, but we as uh, frail people, we, we want justice done quickly, Lord, and not uh, be delaying. And so, Father, we just pray that we know that you as the righteous judge, that you will make all right. And so, Father, we just pray that you give us um, a great day. Again, thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for your son, Jesus, what he did for us on Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for those missionaries and preachers out there that are standing bold for you and trying to win souls for you, Lord. We want to continue to lift up this nation and pray for it, Lord, that you, um, even though it's on the wrong path and it's, it's serving Satan right now, that, that until you return, which we, we know, Lord, you're going to be returning soon, we pray even so come, Lord Jesus, that that uh, until then you'll at least keep this nation somewhat afloat just for the sake of your, of your children, the Christians. And so, Father, we just pray that for those Christians that are in this nation, that they would start acting like the Christians and start uh, serving you and trying to win souls. We know the time, as we said, is getting close, but yet people just, they don't care. And, and you know, a lot of times they're just much part of the problem. So, Instead of being the problem, they need to be the solution, Lord. So, Father, we just pray that you'll be with each and every one. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to be continuing our study in Revelation. This will be Revelation part 60. And we're going to be starting chapter 9. But before we get started, I just wanted to point out, this is my latest book here, Catalog of All Scripture Found in Chick Tracks. And again, it's found on Amazon. It's either an ebook or a um, paperback. And, you know, it it's, um, has a lot of material in there that can be useful for not only people that, that are handing out chick tracks, you know, there's a section in there determining what um, tracks can be helpful for certain conditions and whatever you're passing them out for. There's a, you know, for chick track collectors, it can be helpful for, you know, there's a list of all, chronological list of all uh, chick tracks from the very first one all the way up to the latest one, you know, why known arrival to the latest one of then what, then what. And it tells you the author, I mean, the artist as well as the writer. And it also has things in there that, you know, even somebody that's just a comic book collector can find it interesting because it has stuff in there that they can learn more about the all-time greatest selling comics. So, you know, there should be some interest in there for various types of groups. And so, again, that's available on Amazon as a paperback or ebook, and appreciate the support. All right, let's go ahead and get started again here in uh, Revelation. So, you know, we, we looked in chapter 8, and we had seen the first four angels had sounded their trumpets. You know, we're looking at the trumpet judge, judgments right now. You know, we had previously looked at the seal judgments, and then now we're looking at this, the trumpet judgments. And again, there's going to be seven. Each one, each judgment has seven. You know, these, these will be filed, filed, followed by the seven vile judgments. And we saw the first four on how they, um, you know, there was different, there was third part of this 
the well, the, you know, remember, well, first of all, remember that some of these judgments are connected to Egypt, the the, the ten plagues that you know they're, they're similar judgments to what God did used on Egypt, except for these are just going to be on a much grander scale, and instead of just being around Egypt, they're going to be worldwide. I said all together is going to be five of the between the judgments between the trumpet and the vow judgments that are basically the same judgments as God did with Egypt. But we had seen that in the, in the first trumpet judgment, then, you know, hail and fire, this is in chapter 8, verse 7, that the hail and fire uh, was mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees were burnt up and the grass was burnt up. So, you know, the trees and the grass were burnt up. Then in the second one, then a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures that were in the sea, they died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Then we saw, you know, what we see here, so, we, you know, we had hail and fire that were cast down. This one had a mountain and um, burning with fire cast down. You notice how God is using, you know, fire and all that stuff again, you know, also to, to burn up these, these um, things. So that was the second judgment. Then the third judgment there fell a great star from heaven and a third part of the rivers uh, landed on, you know, on the part of the third part of the rivers. And that's, you know, those, those waters became wormwood, which means bitter. And then, you know, the men died of the waters and so forth. Then we saw the fourth angel sounded in verse 12. And a third part of the sun was smitten and a third part of the moon and third part of the stars. You know, so they didn't shine for, you know, all that time period. And again, remember I said that I believed that it was literally that the sun was not shining. You know, it wasn't like, you know, we just had an eclipse that came across the United States here back on, on April 8th. And, you know, that those eclipses, like I said, number one, they don't last very long. This is talking about the third part of the day. You know, an eclipse, the longest one on record is only about eight minutes. You know, this one here lasted about four minutes. One in 2017 was only about two minutes. You know, so they're not very long time. So, I mean, we've talked about that before with the crucifixion that for the three hours on the cross, you know, obviously that couldn't have been an eclipse because it's the time frame, not to mention that an eclipse has to be during a new moon, whereas Passover when Jesus was crucified was on a new, I mean, a, a full moon. But I, I said that, you know, even like during an eclipse or something, then, you know, even though the sun's kind of blocked out, then it's, you know, it gets dark, but it's still, it's not so dark that you cannot see anything. It's not so, uh, all of a sudden the temperature, you know, it may drop a tiny bit, but it's not so great that all of a sudden uh, you're freezing or whatever and stuff. But yet, I believe that this is telling you that, you know, for a third part of the day and night, then the sun won't be shining, the moon and so forth. So, you know, this was much more than something where the sun just gets blocked, like with the eclipse, that I truly believe that the, you know, God just does not allow the sun to produce or the moon reflecting the light and so forth and the stars uh, producing their light during this period. You know, that, that that's why I, I said I believe that it was going to get very cold or, you know, some of these other things were going to come into place. You know, it was going to be a, a darkness that, you know, you would not be able to, you know, it, it, that, like in Egypt, there were talk about that it was a darkness that could be felt, you know, it was so dark and so forth. And I said it would be more than likely God would probably not even allow, you know, flashlights or things like that to work just to, you know, that's the whole point is to keep them in dark, you know, and if you could sit there artificially in your house doing all this stuff, you know, then, you know, the judgment really wouldn't be that bad because you could be like, well, I'll just turn some lights on and that type of stuff. But as I said, I think even the temperatures are going to be affected, you know, because people say that, you know, they, I had said that some say, well, you know, it's just going to be reduced by one third. But again, I don't believe so because it's, it's kind of like that eclipse thing where it gets, in one sense, it was getting reduced. But I think it's more than that. I think it says it just won't shine. I think it's just not, not it could be anything there being produced, you know, during that time period. Well, let's take a look at the uh, fifth one here. So we're going to start uh, Revelation chapter 9. So Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So the fifth angel sounds his trumpet to send another judgment upon the earth. 
Now, this is the first of the three woes that the angel in Revelation 8.13 warned about. You know, let me, let me go back and read uh, the last verse of chapter 8. So, Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. You know, and I mentioned that, that woe means great misery due to disaster. You know, and here woe is said three times since there will be three woes. You know, that the, these disasters are going to, you know, they're going to start getting worse. And so, you know, this will be the first of the three woes. Now, the last three trumpet judgments are all also considered woes. And this is the first of those three. You know, so there's still trumpet judgments, but they're also the, what known as the woe judgments. And so, you know, but they're just a little bit more grander and, and so forth. Because we're going to see here, you know, the other ones that God was allowing these things. But here now, God is going to allow... Satan to really kind of get directly involved and so forth, you know, because it says, I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So, like I said, this is the um, the first of the three woes. Now, John sees a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him, the star, you know, that's the star, is given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, we see in this verse, as elsewhere, how angels are compared to stars. Now, you know, even today, secularly, then sports players and actors are referred to as stars. You know, you got, you know, the they got the, in Hollywood, they got the, the, the Walk of Fame or whatever, and they all have these stars on there with their name. You know, they're referred to as you know, he's a movie star or something like that. You know, this baseball star or football star. You know, they're, they're these, you know, they refer to all, the, you know, they refer to them as stars. You know, so, you know, we see how people are referred to that way. Well, the angels are too in scripture. They're referred to as stars. So, you know, I've, I've showed you in different places at times in the past. Now, I said it was possible that Wormwood mentioned in chapter 8 may have been a meteorite, but may actually have been an angel. As we see here, star refers to an angel. We know this is an angel and not a literal star since it is referred to as him and is holding, a, you know, he is holding a key. You know, the star is holding a key. It says up here that, uh, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth. And to him, you know, referring back to the star, was given the key of the bottom of the pit. You know, so this star is a him and it's literally holding the key to the bottomless pit. You know, a literal star cannot hold a key, and if it fell to the earth, would completely destroy it. You know, most stars are much bigger than the earth. You know, there's a few of the white dwarfs or whatever, that, you know, the ones that are so compressed and everything, then they're about the size of the earth or a little bit smaller. But basically, most of them are much bigger. I mean, the sun is many, many times bigger than the, the earth. I don't remember now how many, I think it was a million times bigger or something like that. You know, it, it's, it's much bigger than, than the earth. And the star and the sun, there's a lot of stars a lot bigger than even the sun. So, you know, obviously, you know, if the sun were to literally land on the earth, it would completely, you know, devour it, you know, whatever. But we saw there with the, with the wormwood, uh, let me read that here again uh, there in verse chapter 8 verse 11 and the name of the star is called wormwood you know we saw that you know where this great star from heaven came down you know and like i said we discussed whether it was a meteorite whether it was a an actual a um you know an angel or whatever you know and remember god does name all the stars it tells us that in scripture that he names all the stars but he also names all the angels. You know, he has names for them too. That you know, they're not necessarily mentioned in Scripture. You know, except for Michael and Gabriel and Satan. But and I think uh, we'll see here pretty soon another another one, which I think is the fourth one. But which some people say is Satan, which I disagree with. But anyway, the point is that you know they you know even the, you know God does still have names for them. So it doesn't necessarily all mean it had to be an angel. But in this case here then I think it clearly is referring to an angel because, again, 
it's referring to him as him, and it, you know he's given this this key to the bottomless pit, you know where a little star you you know you can't hold a key or something. So now many have said that this angel or star that falls from heaven to the earth is Satan, while others say it is a holy angel. Now those that say it is a holy angel point out that in Revelation chapter twenty verse one then it seems the same angel is here still is holding on to the key to the bottomless pit for the rest of the tribulation. And then he locks Satan in the bottomless pit for a thousand years just before the start of the millennial reign of Jesus. Now, if it is the same angel, then it definitely cannot be Satan since the angel with the key in Revelation 21 locks Satan up. Now, this all may be true, but Scripture never says the two angels are the same and it is possible that Jesus gave the key to Satan and the key was then given to this angel after the bottomless pit was opened. You know, we don't know for sure, but I mean, he could easily have done so. And then he, you know, because remember, Satan has to obey what, what Jesus tells him to do. You know, he thinks he's in charge, but he has to. So if then Jesus tells him, OK, now you have to give the key back. Because remember, first of all, Jesus has already defeated Satan on the cross. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, he's already defeated death and so forth. You know, Satan knows he's defeated. So, you know, he has to obey him. You know, so it's not one of those things like he has the right to this key or anything else because he doesn't. So, um, now some have even said the star refers to Jesus, but I do not believe so. They say because Jesus said he has the keys to hell and death in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. But I believe Jesus gives the key to whom to whoever this angel will be. You know, it's clearly talking about an angel and not Jesus. So, you know, I'm going to show you here in a minute that I believe it's probably Satan. But just, um, you don't have to necessarily turn there. But I just want to read those couple verses so we know what we're talking about here. So Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. You know, we'd already looked at that in our study. But Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Then Jesus here is speaking to John and he says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. You know, so they'll say, well, you know, he says he has the key. Well, that's true. But, I mean, I can have the keys. I can have car keys or something that I can say, here, you know, here's the keys, you know, if you want to take the car out or, you know, you, you give your keys to the child or something, and then they want to take the car out, and then they give them back to you when they get back, you know, so... That doesn't mean that he, you know, never, somebody else cannot have those keys or whatever. And then if you go and look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, then it says, uh, so Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon. See, there's that dragon we were talking about there in this morning's service. That old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So, obviously, we know in, here in Revelation chapter 20, it's not talking about Satan. Because this angel that ha, 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 comes down, you know, he has the key to the bottomless pit. And he's going to open it up and put this chain around, you know, Satan. He's going to cast him into the bottomless pit for that thousand years. You know, and again, I don't believe it's Jesus that, you know, he's having him do it. But regardless, we know they're, they're not the same. But here, you know, so then the question is, well, then who is this angel? Is it still the same one here? Or, or uh, you know, is it some holy angel? Or is it Satan? Well, um, you know, the things for this star being Satan are that God allows Satan great power and authority during the tribulation, and here he allows Satan's helpers to be released. You know, the verse says the star fell from heaven. If you look at it, it says, I saw a star fall from heaven. You know, even those other things, they, they, they fell from heaven, even though even whether it's a meteorite or you want to say it was another star with wormwood and so forth. These things, they fell from heaven. Now, a holy angel or Jesus does not fall from heaven. 
You know, the, the, the holy angels and Jesus are never described as falling from heaven. You know, Satan, uh, Jesus described Satan as, um, you know, we're going to see that as falling from heaven. Excuse me, we'll look at that in a minute. Now, Satan, when he was still Lucifer, is described by God as falling from heaven. If you would, turn to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. So Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. We'll look at a couple verses here. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. You know, these are the verses that, remember, the, the modern corrupt Bibles, they will take out the word Lucifer and so forth. It, uh, actually, I put the wrong verse in there, so let me look it up. Um, let me mark a note here. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did didst weaken the nations? You know, then it goes on, you know, talking about, you know, the fall of Satan, you know, how he was trying to descend higher than, than God and so forth. But, you know, we, it says here, how art thou fallen from heaven? You know, so he's describing him as fallen from heaven. You know, he's rebe you rebelled, you rebelled against God, and so now you are fallen. And then go to Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Now, this here is where Jesus is talking about, uh, you know, end time stuff and everything. He's describing different things. And so, you know, this is Jesus himself talking here. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Okay, Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So just as lightning, you know, it comes shooting, falls out of heaven, you know, Jesus is saying he saw Satan do the same thing, that he fell from heaven. You know, so obviously, again, here it is, Jesus talking as, you know, he, he's talking here as the God-man, but he's saying, you know, obviously he's referring to here now as his deity side, not as his man side, because as a man, he was not around at the time of the fall of, of, of Satan. So now this is the deity part of Jesus speaking, saying, you know, as God, I've always been around. I'm the one that created Lucifer. And that, you know, he saw him fall, you know, in his pride that as he tried to uh, become like the most high as it describes there in Isaiah chapter 14. But so we see here, you know, how Satan is referred to as falling from heaven. Well, this star also, it says, I saw a star fall from heaven. So as I said, we see here how Lucifer and Satan are the same angel. So again, we also know you can confirm that Lucifer and Satan are the same. You know, people try to say, oh, they're not the same. And, you know, you, you hear all this stuff. People always trying to defend Satan and all this kind of stuff. Well, even people that are Satan worshipers, you know, they refer to him as Lucifer. They know that they're one and the same. They just don't call him Satan because Satan, you know, means means adversary of God. And then, um, you know, devil means, um, um, I can't remember now. But anyway, one means adversary and one means can't remember now, but the, um, you know, they're not going to use like his fallen names because remember he got renamed that after his fall that just like, you know, Jesus renamed Jacob became Israel and, you know, Abram became Abraham, Sarah, Sarai became Sarah and different ones, you know, they get their names changed. Well, Satan had his name changed too, you know, so he became, was Lucifer and became Satan. And so, you know, they understand, but I mean, again, you know, Scripture is confirming, you know, if you're comparing Scripture with Scripture, you can see, because it's clearly, he's talking about the same fall that's described there in Isaiah. Okay, 
But now angels are described as falling, you know, or I should say unholy angels are described as falling, not holy angels. So, you know, if you look look in places, then you know they're they're that's how they're described. Now Satan will be given the key to the bottomless pit to unleash much havoc on the world. Remember, during this time, Satan's on this huge, huge, mighty long leash. You know, he's still under the authority of, of God, he, you know, Jesus. He can only still do what he allows him. But during this time, God almost just about gives him free reign to do certain things. Now, there's certain things he cannot do that, you know, he, you know, initially he can't do anything to the uh, two witnesses for those three and a half years. Then God gives him permission. Okay, now you can take them out. You know, for three and a half years, they're untouchable. Nobody can do anything. Anybody try to touch them, they get devoured by fire and so forth. Same thing with the 144,000. Initially, they're not allowed, but then Satan does allow them to, I mean, God does start allowing Satan to kill them off. So he, he's allowed, you know, on this long leash. So he's allowed to, you know, have his helpers. Because remember, I believe that during this time, they get kicked out of heaven for good. You know, right now, Satan still has access, we see in Job. To go up there and accuse us of different things and then jesus says, no no they're washed in the blood of you know my blood and you know so they have to be you know you have to let them go father and so then you know satan you know he tries to do all this stuff but he can't do anything you know that's what it is one of the one of them means accuser and one means adversary i think satan I mean, satan means adversary and i think devil means accuser if i remember or vice versa but the um so, you know, Satan, you know, he, he he's allowed, you know, at this point, I think because he's going to be permanently kicked down to earth, you know, he's not going to be able to have that access anymore. And then that's why he's allowed to get some of his helpers from the bottomless pit and so forth. But but the angel warned this was the first woe and how those, these coming three trumpet judgments were going to be bad. Now, I have seen some theologians say that it is at this time of this fifth trumpet judgment that Satan will be cast out of heaven for good. You know, as I said, today he still has access to heaven, though he cannot permanently stay there. But one day during the tribulation will no longer be allowed access forever to heaven. Now, this is most likely at the time he indwells the Antichrist. Now, it is possible that it is close to the time of this fifth trumpet judgment, as the next few chapters are basically interlude chapters that tell of the other things, such as the two witnesses, the fall of Satan as he is cast from he out from heaven, and the death of the Antichrist. But does not necessarily mean these things all take place long after this fifth trumpet judgment. You know, so these other coming coming in chapters, you know, I, I tend to agree that this is probably very likely the time when Jesus when Satan is permanently cast out of heaven. And, you know, it then it's like the other ones, like we said, it's kind of like these interludes. It just starts describing, okay, these are gonna be the two witnesses. This is a little description on how Satan was cast out of heaven and so forth. But it's not necessarily, you know, this particular point. It's just referring back to the point when he was kicked out probably at this this fifth uh, judgment. So he's letting them, you know, as he's cast out, here's the key, go open it up. And, you know, then, of course, a holy angel or Jesus himself will come back and get it or whatever. But, you know, so that's how that other angel has it. I mean, again, it could be possible that it's literally a holy angel that's doing it. But, you know, I, I mean, certainly, I, I just like I said, I think just by the fact that it's describing this fall from heaven, you know, all these things that are judgments. I mean, you look at even all the other ones when it's talking about what's believed to be a meteorite or other things that, you know, that, that they fell from heaven. You know, things that fall from heaven are unholy things. You know, Jesus and they said, like holy angels, they don't fall from heaven. You know, they come down to earth, but we, they don't fall. Fall is like when you're, you know, you're, you're cast out, you know, that type of stuff. So, you know, to me, I think it's probably more likely describing, um, you know, Satan. And so, like I said, I think that, um, you know, we'll finish looking at this first next week, talking about the bottomless pit and so forth. But, you know, just keep that in mind that, you know, those are some of the things that why I believe it is referring to Satan or so forth. But, you know, if somebody else disagrees, hey, that's fine, whatever. But I just, um, I think if you look at some of these, these other things, then, uh, You know, these things are always described as different things that, that fell and so forth. And so, but let's have a word of prayer. We'll continue it next week, like I said, in this first picking up, dealing with the bottomless pit. Father, we thank you for your study, allowing us to have studies here on, on your word, here in Revelation. 
And Father, we are getting so close to the time when these things are going to be fulfilled that um, we know it's not long away, that, that your return is soon. When we see the evilness around us, the wickedness, and the, that, you know, even among a lot of the professing Christians, how they just, uh, just are not being obedient to you, Lord. Like I said, they have no desire to go out there and try to win souls. They have no desire to really even try to be obedient to you. They just go along with what's going on in the world and, and just kind of live each day as if they weren't even saved. And so, Father, we pray that they'll all be convicted. We pray that those out there that are being deceitful and lying, that they'll be convicted of their sins and, and repent and, and make what's wrong right. And so, Father, we just pray that you'll, again, keep that hedge around us, keep us all healthy and safe. Be with your servant and those that are here and listening online. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.